In this video, we're going to look at how you can visualize a Pareto chart in Power BI. We're going to go through what it is, what it's used for, and the step-by-step -step of how you write it in DAX. All of that and more. So without further ado, let's get started. Hi, my name is Fernan and welcome to the Solutions Abroad YouTube channel, where we cover tips, tricks, and best practices when working with Power BI. I upload new videos every week, so make sure you hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to get notified when a new one is out. So the Pareto principle, also commonly known as the 80 to 20 rule, is essentially a rule that states that 80% of your output is contributed by 20% of your inputs. So imagine that you're a business owner that sells uh, different products and you want to increase your overall total sales. And to do this, you want to improve the products that you sell. But how do you go about doing this? Do you try to improve all the products that you sell? That option might take a lot of time if you have a lot of products, but by using the Pareto principle, it will let you narrow down which of those products are most effective, that sells the most, and focus your efforts in there. So a Pareto chart is commonly visualized like this. So here we are in my Power BI report and I've already pre-created a Pareto chart showing which countries have the highest sales within this uh, data model that we've got here. So a Pareto chart is basically just a combo chart. The line chart is the total sales that we have for each of those countries. So USA, Germany, Austria, and the line chart is the cumulative sum and percentage of all of those total sales. And what we've highlighted here is the top 80% that contributes to the total sales, which is basically if you're trying to make an analysis of which countries to focus your sales on, it would be these top 80%. So how do you read this? The numbers, the percentages in our Pareto line charts is the cumulative percentage against the total sales that we have. So 38% here means that USA and Germany combined together makes up 38% of our total sales. USA, Germany, and Austria makes up 48% of our total sales, and so on and so on. So the principle basically looks at the first, uh, the top 80%, which means that if we want to focus our efforts on improving our total sales, it would be these countries from USA, Germany, Austria, all the way to Ireland. We have other countries here as well, which we have total sales on, but it would be most efficient if we focused our efforts towards those that have the highest uh, total sales, which would theoretically have the maximum impact. So the only complicated thing in this calculation is basically just the cumulative sum, the Pareto line. So how do we do that? So let's start with a blank Power BI report here. And, uh, I've already preloaded the data model here. So the data model that we're using is our typical Northwind uh, dataset, which is a fictional company that sells goods internationally. I've already created the tables and the different links between these tables. And that's not really the, the most important thing in this uh, data model. The key thing to know is that Northwind data, the Northwind uh, traders company sells goods like groceries to different parts of the world for different customers. We have different products that are uh, categorized in different categories. And we want to analyze how and where we want to focus our efforts on to increase our total sales. Let's go back to the report view here. Let's create a combo chart. So under here, we're going to create a line and stacked column chart. Make it a little bit bigger. Under our calculations, I've already also created a measure, the total sales, which is a super simple uh, measure. It just calculates the total sales by multiplying the unit price and quantity. Let's add that into our bar. Let's start by uh, recreating the one that I've just showed you, which is by showing uh, which countries are the highest selling. So here we have the bar chart now. And the next thing that we need to do is obviously to add that line chart, the Pareto line chart. So if I create a new measure here, I'm going to name it sales Pareto. And let's do a few things here first to set it up. The first thing is we want to calculate and get the total sales across all of our, all of our countries. So that one is pretty simple. So we're going to name it total and we're going to use the calculate function because we want to add this all filter context. We're going to use the expression total sales. So calculate this only those where this country is selected. So it basically removes all the filters from this calculation so that we can get the total. Now, what does this mean? 
So if I show you and I just return total like this, and I think it's sometimes easier if I show the table side by side so that you can see what the actual chart is, is doing. So I've just created a duplicate here. I'm going to change this into a table. So you can see that now we have USA, Germany, which is the same values that we're showing here, except in a tabular uh, format, just because it's a little bit easier to, to, to see the actual values. So if we drag the sales Pareto now here, you can see that it just gives one value, which is the total sales that we have here. And that's exactly what we want because that's how we calculate the cumulative sum. We want to calculate the cumulative sum by the total sales. So great, so that's the first bit. The second bit is to get the uh, the sum of the current context. Now we have that already with total sales, so we're going to put it in a variable. The next thing is we're going to create a summary table which creates the total sales. So basically recreating this table giving us the total sales by country. So the table, the virtual table that we'll create is what we'll use to reference to calculate the cumulative sum. If you remember the Pareto principle, what it needs to do is it needs to add up, let's say if we are in Germany, for example, the line chart must add the Germany total, the USA total and divide it by our total. That's what the percentage percentage that that's how you will see the percentage cumulative sum here in our line. Now that's that sounded a lot of gibberish and confusing. So let me just show you how to do it. So I'm going to name this one uh, table. Some table like this. We're going to use the summarize function which returns a table, right? So we're going to use all selected here and reference the order details table. And uh, we're going to group this by country and because that's the that's the table that we want to, to, to group it by. And then basically just give me a new column called sales and the value in that sales column is basically total sales. So it's not really done anything, but let me visualize to you what that actually does. Uh, so I'm going to put it in a table so you can see exactly what it does. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, new table. So if we put it into a table here, this is what it basically outputs. It gives us the countries and the total sales for those countries. Now, why have we done this? So what we want to do is for every row in this table, we want to add up those values together, which will give us the cumulative sum and then divide it by the total, which will give us the Pareto value. So let's go back to our chart or our measure here. Now, I think we simply just need to, oh, okay, so I've, I've created the, so let me just delete that table because we don't really need that. And then in our return, in our last one, we want to now calculate the cumulative sum. So cumulative sum like this. And then we'll use the sum x function. So we're going to add a filter on this table that we've just created. And we'll say total sales. If total sales is greater than or equals to the current context and then the expression is total sales. So what it will do is it will in that table for every single row that it's summing up, it's looking at the total sales of that, but only those that are higher than it. So it will just give us the cumulative sum. So if I just show you exactly what that does. So here you go. So the first line, it looks at USA and it says, are there any sales higher than the USA? None. So it just gives us the number in that total sales. The next one is Germany. So the Germany's total sales is 244. Are there any total sales higher than this in the country table? Yes, there's USA. So that's why it's 263 plus 244 is equals to 508. So it just basically adds up that same logic to all of these. And that's what gives us that cumulative sum. But that's only part of the equation here, because the last bit that we want to add now is to calculate that percentage. Now, because we've laid down the groundwork, it's basically a simple matter of creating a divide. 
So cumulative sum, the denominator would be the total. And uh, there you have it. So it has quite a lot here. And I think it's, it's recognizing it as a currency, which we don't want. So we're going to change it into a percentage instead, change it into a zero decimal percentage. And there you go. So you have now the sales Pareto, which you can add in your chart. So let's add that. So under build a visual line Y axis, Let's add that sales Pareto there. And there you go. So you can now see what those values are, the cumulative sum against the total sales. Now you can obviously add a few more things, which I added before, like the data labels. Um, you can adjust the legends or the labels individually. So you can hide the total sales if you're not interested in that and just show the Pareto percentage, which is showing here. And if you wanted to control to highlight which areas or which uh, which countries are within the 80% rule, you can also change that um, on the columns conditional formatting. You can create your own measure to do this, or you can just simply just create like some rules here. So if we say the number is greater than or equals to 0 0.8, 0 0.8 to 1, this one needs to be, I believe, uh, it doesn't matter, so blue and then gray. FX, oh, so we change this as well. So total sales needs to be based on the sales per of uh, measure. And there you go. I think there's also something else I messed that up there. So less than or equals to, here you go. So it highlights the top 80% countries that, that you need to focus on. So that's one way to use the Pareto principle to analyze the countries to focus on. But because we have a few other variables or dimensions here, you can also use the Pareto principle on that using this exact same calculation. So let's say we wanted to analyze the categories. So which categories of products should we focus on? So I'm going to go and copy this uh, calculation. I'm going to paste this category Pareto and we'll just change a few things here. So the all selected here needs to be the categories and the all selected here or the grouping, sorry, needs to be categories. So you'll see if we now create that Pareto by category, change this. and then change the X axis as well into our category name like this. So you see that you can already visualize what the Pareto percentage is and which categories to focus on. Uh, last thing, let's try to do the same thing for products instead to be more granular. So let's copy again, new measure. We have products, so I'm gonna name this one products. Uh, products table and the reference here we'll use the product name as the grouping uh, we'll create a copy here change that Pareto to use the products Pareto and change the x-axis to look and show us product names so if we change that into a percentage and by the way, if you if you're wondering why the colors isn't changing is because the reference is still in the country. So to change that, you just simply need to hit the FX here and change the calculation to look at the Pareto that you're visualizing. So products Pareto, same calculation as you can see. We have a lot of products here, but once it reaches 80, that's it. So it turns into gray. That's it. And that's really it for this video. I hope you now know how to create Pareto charts in Power BI. Thanks for watching. As usual, give this video a like if you found it useful. Give it a dislike if you didn't so not to do better for next time. Ask your questions in the comment section box below so I can help you and you can help others. If you really like this video, we have a Patreon page where you can support the channel and get exclusive perks like early access, demo files and credits at the end of these videos. Thanks again for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.